Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. So there are a lot of parameters that affect and influence your success and or failure with CNCs. And there is one formula that is thrown around a lot whenever you first get into CNCs that I think is a little confusing to beginners, and that is chip load. So what is chip load and why does it matter? Well, simply put, chip load is a mathematical formula that relates the rate at which you are moving through your material in terms of feed rate to the speed that your end mill is spinning in terms of revolutions per minute to the number of flutes that your end mill has. Now, obviously, the number of flutes that your end mill has is a fixed parameter for any given end mill. So the two parameters you can really modulate to get that optimal chip load really is the feed rate and the revolutions per minute or the speed of your end mill. So why is chip load important? Well, it is an attempt to optimize the amount of material that you're removing from your stock so that you remove not too little and not too much. So if you remove too little, you're not going to get an appropriate material removal rate and you're going to have to do a lot more cutting than necessary. If you attempt to remove too much, then your end mill might heat up and dull very quickly, or you might break a bit, or you might actually damage your machine if you cut too aggressively. And certainly these things all affect the surface finish as well. So you really want to try and get close to that optimal chip load so that you're removing that appropriate amount of material for all these various parameters. An end mill manufacturer will usually recommend some sort of chip load for your end mill. And so now that you have the chip load value and you know the number of flutes of your end mill, you can calculate a surface speed or a feed rate and an RPM that is appropriate for your machine and for the operation you're trying to do. What I generally do is I try to fix one of those parameters, either the feed rate or the spindle speed itself, and then I calculate what the optimum value is. Now most CAD programs will generally calculate this for you. You type in your in the number of flutes of your end mill and maybe your speed that you want to move through the material and it'll give you a chip load or potentially you can give it a chip load and it'll recommend some sort of optimal parameters for you. However, as I mentioned earlier, the chip load calculation does not take into account two really important parameters or items that are absolutely essential and critical to success of your operation. And that is the material that you are using and the depth at which you are cutting. Knowing the material that you're using and having an appropriate depth of cut is absolutely essential. It is critical to having a successful operation. You can optimize your chip load, but if you are cutting too deeply or if you are cutting too quickly through a material that is not appropriate for your machine or your end mill, then the operation will fail. In many cases, it will fail catastrophically, usually in destroying your stock, breaking your bit, or even potentially harming your machine and that is not something that you want to do on a regular basis if at all. Now I have broken my fair share of bits for lots of various reasons some of which are because I was trying to cut too aggressively some of which because I just wasn't paying attention and sometimes just because you know bits break sometimes they're brittle and they might have a weak point and you'll hit that and then it'll just snap off and I've had that happen to me. So it's not a big deal if you were to break a bit but you do have to step back and ask yourself why and what those parameters were that may have caused that bit to break. So now that we understand what chip load is and why it is important, how does it relate to the material that you're using and the depth of cut? Well, I wish I could tell you that there was a single formula that related all of them together, but as far as I know, there isn't. So I've come up with a couple rules of thumb over the years for depth of cut that I think really help increase my probability success with my CNC machine. So if you are getting value out of this video, I would really appreciate appreciate a thumbs up and uh, it really helps out the channel and it really helps out YouTube's algorithms. All right, so what are those rules of thumbs? Well, I like to start with 50% of the diameter of the bit as my depth of cut. So for example, if you have a quarter inch end mill, then setting your initial depth of cut at one eighth of an inch, I have found provides really great results with a reasonable feed rate. So on that point, I have found that the depth of cut might be the most important parameter in my opinion 
it is feed rate is the second most important parameter to guarantee or at least increase the probability of success with your operation. And so the other rule of thumb around depth of cut is to not go beyond 100% the diameter of the bit. So if you keep your depth of cut between that 50 and that 100%, it generally allows you a lot of latitude with your feed rate and your spindle speed. And that latitude is what gives you your probability of success going up instead of a failure. So all that said, what would I recommend for the different materials that I use most? Well, for most wood species in the hardwood varieties, which is what I cut most, I usually start around 80 inches per minute and I dial that up to about 120 inches per minute with a 50% depth of cut. I have found the generalized parameter for a quarter inch end mill. When I use a quarter inch end mill, if I use a depth of cut of 0.15 inches uh, with an 80 to 100 inches per minute cut is really optimal for me. That allows me to cut maple and um, walnut and cherry uh, all with the same parameters and not a lot of variance in surface finish. If you are using maybe exclusively softer woods, whether that be something like cherry or pine, right, you can increase that feed rate and keep that depth of cut or even increase your depth of cut as well. Now for a 1 8 inch end mill, I generally cut around a 50% mark and so around, uh, you know, a 16th of an inch deep. Uh, and I keep that feed rate uh, no higher than about 80 inches per minute. Now, I will tell you that that does not necessarily create the most optimal chip load, uh, but what it does is it creates the most successful series of cuts for me and my machine. So for me, I would rather sacrifice that optimal chip load for a successful operation rather than maybe push the chip load into an optimal range and potentially have a failure or the operation not be terribly successful. All right, well, that was the video. I hoped you enjoyed it. There are a lot of parameters that go into using your CNC, and it can be very overwhelming when you are a beginner. In fact, I created an entire series of videos specifically dedicated at learning the basics of CNC, and I will link them right here if you are interested. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for getting this far, and don't forget to be inspired.